Now proceeding, uh, I would request Mr. Subhash Nair to accompany Mr. Pranav Shah on the dais. Huge round of applause. He has been with uh, Mikas Organics Limited from 2011 and looks after company's operations in addition to sales and marketing. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll be discussing about sustainable pigments for paint and coating industry. Over to you, sir. So the next one is green, is it? Good afternoon to everybody. And I would first like to uh, thank uh, IPCA for this opportunity. So I'm going to be talking about uh, more on sustainability and then why you need sustainable pigments and sustainable raw materials within the paint and coating industry. Okay. So first a little bit about MICAS. We've been uh, in the pigment manufacturing industry for the last 35 years. We have seven sites across uh, Gujarat in Wapi making different chemistries. We do about uh, 70 color indexes in total uh, with about 235 products or grades of pigments. Uh, we have two fully reach registered products and 24 pre-reach registered products. Uh, with capacity about, uh, installed capacity about 6000 metric tons uh, for lead chromes and anti-corrosive pigment about 3,500 metric tons for the organic pigment, the lead-free pigments, the thylocyanin and the high-performance pigments, and about 2,000 tons for the pigment intermediates, which are the raw materials which are required for pigments. So we are the only backward integrated pigment company in India where we make our own pigment intermediates or pigment raw materials, which goes into our various pigment chemistries. So you can see at the bottom, we make about six pigment intermediates going into various pigment chemistries. So this is one of our intermediate sites in uh, Gujarat in Wapi. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the paint and uh, uh, coatings market and the size. I mean, everybody knows about this, but why I'm going to stress on this is, you know, on, the, on my next slide when I talk about uh, the figures. So if you see in 2003, we were at about 68 uh, b uh, billion rupees or 1.5 billion US dollars. And in a span of 10 years, this has reached 620 billion, which is almost, uh, you know, 10% increase, which has taken 20 years. But now in the, the next five years till 27, we are going to be almost 100 billion rupees industry. So we are, the paint and coating industry is going to grow at a CAGR of 9% with a large concentration amongst the top five or six paint manufacturers within India. Globally, the growth is going to be able to put a, a, a big load on the raw materials and where those raw materials are coming from. So if you look at it globally, in 2022, we have generated greenhouse emission of close to 38.6 gigatons. So you can see the jump in the last 40, 50 years. So this is a clear indication that there is so much of, you know, consumption of natural resources, consumption of coal. You can just look at the figure of, you know, oil and coal, which were almost together, but now the coal consumption or the coal usage has gone up so drastically, which is putting so much of a load on our natural resources. If you look at the industry segments, which are consuming the most, it's power, then it comes to our industries, now look at transport. Transport is equivalent to the industries and the amount of consumption that the industries are also doing in terms of, in terms of all the fuels. So a recent study that I was reading, it says that the human race has about 300 years. If we don't act now, your and my sixth generation will not see what we are seeing today. So 2322 is somewhere going to be, you know, that era where if we are not acting now, responsibility, looking at raw materials with a responsible uh, fact or looking at sustainability, 
you know, it's going to become very difficult for us to survive. And I think eight speakers today out of the 24 have spoken about sustainability. And the sustainability angle has come in in the last 10, 15 years. And if you see most of, you know, uh, the companies are now looking at a sustainable solution for their products. So what was the earlier approach? The earlier approach was, you know, nobody was worrying or nobody was looking at resource depletion. So you can see this, we are, we are depleting our resources so fast that this has now become an, you know, immediate attention or immediate challenge for us globally. There was so much of human health hazard, there was a lot of safety hazards and obviously the environmental hazards. Everybody knows about how much we have impacted the environment. You look at the figures coming out of China, you look at the figures coming out of India. So, so every company, every industry, every, every person here will have to look into how we are going to become more and more sustainable and what type of sustainable products we are going to use within making our own uh, end application or whatever products that we are making. So at the end of the day, I think if you look at each and every company, they want to improve their performance. So the performance needs to be in the products, whether you are using renewable raw materials, in terms of manufacturing, are you going more with automation? Are you still using the same old techniques and processes which are using more and more natural resources because when you automate, you use less energy, you use less electricity. With respect to supply chain, are we doing just-in-time deliveries or are we looking at other alternative options where we can get raw materials to our site with other, other alternatives where people are using hydrogen vehicles or electric vehicles. If you look at technology, are we making our products with the right, right mass balance? Are we using the actual uh, components that are only required or are we adding more? Are we using any renewable raw materials? So, in terms of packing also, you know, we, we need to look at what kind of packing are we going to use, are we able to use any, you know, packing which is, uh, can be reused, can be recycled and ultimately with people. The people also need to be very well trained, they need to be updated with the latest technology in terms of sustainability. I am sure with time there are going to be KPIs set in every organization where they have to have sustainable KPI goals and targets. So this is eventually going to be a circle where if you want to survive within any industry or any business, you will need to have better performance products and eventually they need to be sustainable. If they are not, then going forward it's going to be a difficult challenge for anybody to survive and sustain. So now look at the commitments which are being given by the top 8, 10, you know, paint and coating companies. Why have they given these commitments? And all these paint companies and the coating companies are really working on how fast they are going to reach their net carbon neutral goal. So, so the point is there, is there is a reason why they all are doing this. So look at EU. Now what has the EU said? They first came up with REACH in 2013 where they said that if you are not REACH compliant you can't supply into EU. Now what is the EU saying? One is they have said that by 2050 they are going to be a net carbon neutral country. Another thing what they are saying is that by 31st January 2024 they have selected five sectors who will have to pay an additional carbon tax. If they are bringing in any of, the, any of their products into EU which is steel, aluminum, electricity, fertilizer or cement. Any of these products coming into the EU, even from a third world country will have to pay a tax if they are not able to justify their CO2 numbers or their emission numbers. So this is definitely going to increase compliance, it is going to increase cost for the companies in EU, but then that is definitely going to be pushed on to countries like India where if we want to export to the EU, we will have to be sustainable with reduced CO2 emissions. Now look at India, what is India saying? India has already announced that we are going to be a net neutral country by 2070. You can see even 2030 written there, Indian Railways has committed to be net carbon neutral by 2030. So you can imagine how fast even India is operating at this pace. So what is going to be the forward approach? The forward approach has to be that we reduce we try and recover whatever we can through our processes. We definitely rethink before using any of our raw materials. 
we have to try and repair what we can before we try to get in a new equipment or uh, or anything new into the organization we need to recycle we need to reuse we obviously need to regift there is nothing wrong in regifting and ultimately i feel the last r is going to be the most important is start refusing there will be a point in time where some customers of yours will tomorrow tell you that i can't use your product because you are not sustainable anymore so this again comes back to the whole circle which i was talking about that definitely you need a good performing product but eventually it needs to be sustainable even it's it's going to be a point where your product may not be very expensive but if you're not sustainable maybe the customer is not going to buy it after a certain point in time so now looking at pigments and why pigments need to be sustainable why a pigment manufacturer needs to be sustainable so if you look at the figures there you have one metric ton pigment requires 65000 liters of water so our industry requires more water than more of energy or more of uh, you know steam or electricity or you know anything else but we require the most amount of water so if you see last year or this year 2023 the market is about 490 kilotons kilo metric tons now if you multiply that by 65000 liters you everybody in this room will require their phone or their calculator so so the industry is growing at 2.84% we are going to reach 256 kilo metric ton by 2027 but you can just imagine the amount of water that that my industry is consuming so for us as a pigment manufacturer we have to be sustainable when it comes to water so out of the un 17 sustainable goals uh, micas has taken up 13 goals that we need to you know work on or we are already working on very aggressively and we have adopted these 13 goals uh, on which we are very you know strongly going to be working on out of this uh, with respect to rain water harvesting we have already harvested more than 365 million liters of water in the last 4 years from when we started our rain water harvesting system we have generated more we generate even as we speak more than 150 kilowatt of clean energy per day with a reduction of co2 of about 575 metric ton already uh, on the right you can see that we have uh, uh, you know tied up with the government of gujarat where we have uh, donated a hostel uh to ensure that we are able to do more of community service we have already spent more than 100 million rupees on this uh, endeavor and we we going to keep you know investing more into uh, all these goals of sustainability so what's our target as a company that we have decided is to generate more than 1000 kilowatt per day of electricity which is a seven fold increase from what we are doing today we are going to recycle and reuse more than 1000 million liters of water per year which is again a tenfold increase we are going to invest more into the community with a threefold increase of a spend of more than 300 million rupees and 15% reduction in our generation of etp sludge per kg of pigment so these are the main industries in which we operate uh, we have our products for almost all the industries that uh, any customer is looking for so if you look at our range of pigments we have the entire basket of pigments from inorganic and anti corrosive thalocyanine the high performance pigments the lead free range and finally the organic pigments the ones again yellow are the ones which are made using our own raw materials so if you look at our featured pigments uh, today the lead the regular lead chromes are very common but we have the high performance lead chromes which are pre darkened it has excellent heat stability of more than 260 to 270 degrees they have a high gloss about 25% more than the regular lead chromes and they have good weathering stability when we also have a lead free range which are a one to one replacement of the conventional lead chromes so this is a straight replacement of the lemon middle scarlet uh, lead chromes that have been used that have been there in the industry for many years so in thalocyanine we have two star products which is pigment blue 152 
which are the non flocculating pigments and pigment blue 156 now we have benchmarked all these pigments with the industry leaders or the industry standards and we would be more than happy to you know uh, talk to anybody who wants to know against whom we have benchmarked these products then under high performance we have orange 67 uh, excellent product with an excellent stability and dispersion and we have yellow 83 which is the highly opaque yellow which is used for uh, the decorative application and then these are the list of uh, you know the general uh, organic pigments that are the high volume organic pigments used mainly in architectural general or industrial and I mean basically I've just given a short list of uh, the pigments out of the 70 color indexes which we feel are our, our featured pigments um, for the industry so now coming to our expertise and why micas the first one is that we are the only backward integrated pigment company that i said in india there's nobody else other than us who make our own raw materials and make our own pigments we we are moving towards a more sustainable manufacturing setup so with more and more recycling of from raw materials to generation of energy as well as water utilization with all this there is going to be definite cost effectiveness we are a global company we are present in more than 35 countries and the most important is we have the whole basket with a wide range of more than 70 color indexes and 235 grades of pigments that's it from me so if you have any questions please do let me know or you can also get in touch with us um, uh, if you have any uh, you know detailed requirements of any particular color index that you want to look at any questions yes mera ji mera ji is our uh, very old pioneer in the pigment industry anyway pranav i think the what uh, overview you have said it is wonderful the only one thing is it said was sustainability in sustainability i have been thinking the last couple of years that the fundamentally we have to go to the basic roots of stoichiometric of pigments hello is it okay now yeah what i mean you said the sustainability where we are not able to sustain certain other things because things are getting wasted either in the form of liquids the waste the gases for that the fundamental things that everything we have to go to the basic stoichiometry of our pigments in my personal experience i want to share it it will take me two minutes sir please give me two minutes i will just yeah now in this case as you said the first thing the water consumption you said 65000 liters my personal experience today it has come down to less than 30000 where it's been done from last couple of years it has been maintained similarly the power consumptions which were to the tune of about 1 unit more than 1 unit 1.2 1.3 it has come down to less than 0.5 then thirdly the part the main thing is then the case of uh, gas and liquid fuels earlier it was liquid fuels now it is gases the gas also the consumptions if we go fundamentally to our chemistry the requirement of all these three elements so in overall if we look at it the pigment industry becomes very reasonably sustainable because of this yeah, absolutely the, this no. is this is where what is required for the, for all of us in the pigment industry pigment fraternity and very strongly about that in the last uh what you said is the harvesting of water and all this is one part of it but the use of water per kg if we reduce it it will be a big contribution from the industry to the country for that absolutely can you just talk uh, thanks a lot for a very good presentation pranav that's very interesting and good can you just uh, tell a little bit more on the 156 because as per my knowledge i've always gone up to 154 and when i saw 156 i was just wondering what's it thanks so 156 is a high performance uh, thallocyanin pigment uh, which is mainly used for automotive and industrial uh, application you would not see a lot of usage uh, in this apac region you would see more of it in europe and the us but it's it's considered a high performance thallocyanin pigment
requesting uh, Mr. Subhash Naya to present a memento to Mr. Pranav Shah. Thank you, Mr. Nair. Mr. Shah, kindly stay back to announce the winner of the lucky draw. If it's going to be my name. Mr. Ajay Parikh. Is he here? Mr. Ajay Parikh? No, next. Mr. Mrunal Vedya. Miss. Uh, Miss Brunal, Lady oh, Luck, here. yeah. Ladies are always lucky, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everyone, welcome our winner of Lucky Draw. Sorry, Even though we are ending towards our uh, technical sessions, but Mr. Shah was fully present and energetic throughout his segment.